for success, I like to keep things simple. If I have to push you every single day to show up and make calls and do all that, like something's wrong. What I've noticed is a lot of agents are leaving the game right now. Ani, welcome bro. It's good to yeah, finally I mean. meet you. I know we've talked a lot over the phone, through Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff, man. I've been following you for a while. You're out there crushing it, brother. Yo, man, it's it's great to finally meet. Social media got us connected five, six years ago. Yeah. And I'm um, happy to finally sit down at the new office, by the way, yeah. over here in uh, Elmaden, man. I like it. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. Um, so, I mean, we have really no agenda of what we're gonna talk about. A couple of things come to my mind, um, just with the time that we're in, right? In real estate, you've been doing this a while, I've been doing this a while. And I think a lot of the people that watch my content are, you know, agents, stuff like that, who are all out there trying to succeed, right? And so I have some questions for you around, like, what do you think is contributing to your success right now? What do you think it takes to succeed in today's, you know, real estate environment? What do you think makes you different, you know, from any other agents, right? And many, maybe advice. And then we'll go from there and just kind of pick yeah, some things I apart. I like that. Right? I like that. I think, um, I think for success, I like to keep things simple. Mm -hmm. You know, the process is complicated. Sellers, buyers, complicated. So finding a way to keep things simple is really part of the secret sauce that we really uh, put together in every transaction or every client experience. I think some things that could make, you know, you asked a few different questions. I want to touch down on all of them. But, yeah. Uh, things that uh, will make anyone successful is just being your true self. I think uh, there's been more times where early on I walked away from a deal, the deal didn't feel right, or I knew after a few months the client would call me back and say, what did you sell me? Or what the hell did I buy? Yeah. You know, so we have uh, things in, in motion right now to make sure everyone's going to be as happy as possible or as happy as they're going to be in that transaction. Now, when you say being your true self, I guess expand on that a little bit. Are you talking about your personality that you're bringing to the table? Or are you more referring to sticking to like what you're good at? Like, well, expand on that a little yeah. bit more. So uh, I like the the whole authentic self okay. type deal. You know, uh, you could see, and I've been watching your content for quite some time, so I'll pick and choose what resonates with me, but I make it something that's gonna be believable or something that works with the way that I communicate with my clients. So. Yeah. You know, just something that you guys do, I watch early on as your, your stats and your data, a lot of that makes sense, but unless you're giving that to the right person, it's really not going to mean anything. So yeah. converting at a high level and um, being true, like I would say I'm genuine because I'm not going to be tied to a deal. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make sure that client interaction is going to be 110%. Yeah. So 100% is something we talk about at our team meetings of that's kind of the minimum being a hundred percent so we strive to go a hundred and ten percent and from there it's really worked out for us got it you know uh, some deals go through some deals don't but when you get to sleep at night knowing you're helping people and you're true to who you are there you go man that's yeah that's what it's all about i like that man i like that because what i'm hearing from you is being authentic right like when you're going out there and, and what resonates with me is like when I'm giving advice, I'm, I'm giving advice to people, whether it's an agent, whether it's a client, as if they were like my friend or my family, my brother or my sister, right? Even if that means I'm not gonna get the deal, even if that means like, hey, I don't think this is good for you, I don't think you should do that. And there's some times when I will tell them, hey, I think you should move forward with this property right. because based off what we've been looking at, based off what you told me, this aligns with your goals, right? Yeah. Um, I had, I've had some agents that were on our team and I'm like, hey, I don't, I think you should quit real estate. Wow. Right? <laughs> because I see like, this is not really your passion, right? And then as we peel the onion back and dig a little deeper, we find out like, they don't really like this. Or it could motivate them yeah. to really be right? in the game. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it goes both that's ways, right? That's but if I'm like, hey, look at man, I, if I have to push you every single day to show up and make calls and do all that, like, something's wrong right that should be coming from within like we can create an For environment sure. here where we have the tools the resources and all that good stuff but if i have to be like why aren't you marketing your business why aren't you doing when you know what you're supposed to do Something's not in alignment there, yeah. right? Like, is this really what you want to do? Because you signed up for a hard job, right? For sure. Well, it is <laughs> definitely. Right? It's challenging at, at times. And I think if you could still remain, once again, not to sound cliche, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, to remain who you are, but have the knowledge to really guide people through this process. 
it's a win-win for everyone. Yeah. You know, I think one thing that a lot of people look at is what do they get out of the business as opposed to what can they offer mm. in the business. So like that. Uh, once again, it's, it's an interesting type of occupation mm -hmm. and a career that a lot of people see on a TV show in 30 minutes, you know, they're already at the top of the game. But yeah, yeah. This, is, this is like a 10, 12 hour type of job here. Yeah. Ensuring people are, once again, ha having a good experience throughout. There's yeah. one thing I realized early on, and it helped me last year mm -hmm. when we seen uh, like a 30 or 40% jump, is being resourceful. Yeah. Uh, there was someone I offered, uh, they were already having a realtor, but I said, hey, I'm the neighborhood realtor. Mm -hmm. If you need any resources, reach out to me. We work with architects, contractors, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, since then, I kind of hold back the resources now because you know, that's a different, that's a different you know, yeah. part. I had this one client, she reached out, we helped her with an architect, and then with her and her group, we did about 17 deals. Wow. So just off that architect and being resourceful, yeah. not necessarily having that deal, mm -hmm. but nurturing that type of client relationship where we're coming from resources. We're super resourceful and efficient when it comes down to it. So I really like that where someone can call you and say, hey, I need a mover or yeah. I need you know this contractor. Yeah. And for the most part, it's really earned us a lot of referrals, just like that. And what you're saying is something I even talked about in our team meeting the other day, is that the way you're gonna convert more clients is by helping them solve their problems, right? And like exactly. what you just described right there is this person needed an architect, you had the resource, you were able to connect them, and you ultimately helped them solve the problem of whatever they were facing with that property, right? Big Which time. opened up the door, now they see you as a value, now they wanna keep coming back to you, Yeah. right? It's... And so if you wanna convert more clients, you need to figure out what are their pain points, what are they going through? What problems do they have? What challenges are they facing? And how can you be a resource? Yeah. Right. And that a lot of that stuff is not on. It's not in the script. It's not, it's not on. on the, it's yeah. not on the sales presentation or the listing presentation or your buyer consult. It's really just being human to yeah. human, right? And just figuring out like, hey, like, you know, what are you scared about when buying a home? Right. right? What's well, your concern definitely... with selling this home? Right. Yeah. So right now with our new buyers, there's a lot of new buyers on the market. Mm -hmm. And what I've noticed is a lot of agents are leaving the game right now. Yeah. So there's a there's wide open opportunity for everyone. Yep. Whether you just started or whether you've been in the game for a minute. And really just that whole resourceful thing, like everyone we come into contact with, we partner up with the right lender, mm -hmm. we partner up with the right team, and we really just support them. Yeah. You know, I think that's what made you successful here because you give everyone the resources and the support, yeah, but they sure. still need to meet you halfway. Yeah, do the work. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. And you created a lot of uh, top producers, man. Yeah. You know, big congrats to that. Yeah, you I know. see them moving on and doing their things, and that's what a true leader does. You yeah. build an opportunity for people to either continue to add to your company, or you get to watch them grow, which I think is still rewarding. Yeah, it's funny you say that, because a few years ago, like some of the agents were kind of talking and stuff like that like oh you guys just help people you know learn and then they leave you guys right like people come to you just so they can learn and then leave and i'm like is that really a bad thing right like yeah. if i help them from zero and got them up to be a top producer and get the confidence to go out there and open up their own brokerage or their own shop or start yeah. their own team or fly off on their own that means I did something great for that person, right? I agree. And so we, you would be naive to think that someone's going to stay on your team forever, right? right? There will be some like lifers where you just, maybe they get into different roles, but if you're really succeeding in real estate, it's because you have that itch to continue to grow and continue yeah. to grow, right? So it's like now I'm embracing the fact when people are like graduate. Yeah. And uh, we had one of our, our top guys, right? Um, go off on his own and, and, and leave us. And we actually had a celebration for him. Yeah, that's you know, amazing. A big celebration. And we're still doing deals with him right now, even though right. he's no longer on our team. And I know we've impacted his business tremendously and he's done right. a great job, but it's like, dude, it's, it's a good thing, yeah, right? That's true leadership. I think yeah. when you realize there's so much to go around yeah, and you don't have to be greedy. Mm -hmm. And as a true leader, you don't have to like hold them for hostage. It's, yeah. The world is an open marketplace. Yep. And finding the deals between agent to agent and those relationships you've cultivated make the deals easier in the future because yeah. it's a small world in the Bay Area. It is. And the top producers will bump into each other, yep. whether it's on your listing or their listing. 
And, you know, it's funny. We, I think we did a few deals last year. Yeah. So with some of your team members. So whatever it takes to get to the next level, you know, it's a open opportunity business. It is, man. It is. And when you have that abundance mindset, man, it's like there's enough business for everybody. Right. Yeah. And you got to still just continue to show up, whether you're the leader, whether you're on a team or you're solo, like you still got a job to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm embracing that more and more, you know, being like 20 years in the business of what true leadership is all about. And leadership is definitely a journey. You know, yeah. when I first started, I was just a hungry guy just trying to close deals, right? And I knew yeah. nothing about like being a leader and actually impacting people. And, and so that's really my focus right now is how do I become a better leader? Yeah, yeah that was a fun part, you know, yeah. just one man gang, getting every deal, you know, that's what really pivoted me into the current role where I've brought a few other people in, yeah. some managers, directors, people who really take over some of these operational tasks, yeah. but also be successful. So we have this thing where everybody eats. Yeah. You know, if we're all at the table, we're all eating. In this current uh, climate, we all need to stick together. Yeah. And uh, there's gonna be clients or agents that come and go, but your true, in, you know, your true group, you guys are gonna continue to make moves. Yeah. And uh, doing one deal, and being a top agent as one person, that's fun. Yeah. But I did that already. Yeah. So now it's time to grow with a group and get further, whatever that saying is, you know? Yeah. And uh, I think that's where you and I can definitely collaborate and, and mastermind more, right? Because I've been doing, you know, running a team and organization for many, many years. And it's definitely a different ball game of just only thinking about yourself and where's my next deal and servicing your clients versus now how do I motivate these guys to come yeah. in and produce, right? And how yeah. do I create that environment where people want to be around me, want to stick and, mm -hmm. and grow with me, right? And sometimes I just want to say, okay, move out the way. Let me just do this, you yeah. know, but it's like as a leader, you step back and you watch people grow. Yeah. You know, there's that misconception. I think one thing that separated us from last year to now is avoiding all the news and all the negative stuff going on. Yep. Because in a team setting, now that perpetuates throughout the organization. Oh, for sure. So uh, jitters and some uncertainty, it's normal. Mm -hmm. But being able to overcome that and find ways to be creative, it's uh, doing what top percentile people in the game do. Yeah. You just find a way to make it happen. Yeah. And um, I know, like that, man. And um, have fun at the same time. So let me ask you a question, right? This kind of comes to my mind. As you've gone through the business, right, and developed, you know, in your career and now into leadership and all that, what have you learned most about yourself throughout this process? Oh, wow. I've learned so much. You know, I've, I've really learned to continue being helpful. Yeah. You know, in Arabic, my name means something like one who helps. Uh, so, so I guess I'm living true by that. Yeah. But everyone needs help. Yeah. Whether it's a client, whether it's a agent, or even in our personal life, you know, our world really just blurs lines between our personal life and our business life. True. And one thing I've learned is everyone needs help. Mm -hmm. And if you have an opportunity to help, then you should. Yeah. You know, and that's just all part of being a good person. And that really translates into becoming successful. If you put money on the side, being a successful person is just being there for someone that needs help. Yeah. And that's one thing I learned that no matter where I am in the world or what help I need, I always had that support. So I always turn back once I reach a goal and I'm always like, okay, who's coming with me? You know, and I set the expectation. You're going to yeah. have to work. Yeah. You know, you're going to have to work equally or if not more yeah. than me, but we got each other and that's what it yeah. takes. And it's worked out for me. That's dope, man. That's dope. Yeah. I mean, what questions do you have for me, man? I'm asking you some questions. What <laughs> yeah. So... When, when some of your top guys leave, it, yeah. it's, a, it's a slight pinch, you know, you're just like, kind of like, you know, what the hell? Yeah. You know, sometimes if it's without warning, if it's in, you know, just some people will reach out to you and be like, hey man, in a few weeks I'm out. And yeah. some people are just, yeah. you know, no matter what happens, some of those things that you've learned early on building a team, because I'm in the process right now yeah, yeah. of building a team, but I'm super picky. Yeah. So what is it with you and what you've learned knowing that people are going to grow, people are going to be probably a little shady yeah. or be real deal about it. What's something you learned in terms of the new future? Because you got your whole team working here on a holiday. Yeah. So what is it about the new folks that you either are, you have your guard up a little or you're just like? Oh, that's a, good, that's a great question. And I think what comes to my mind first is that when people leave, it's the nature in which they leave, I think, that dictates how you're gonna feel about it. I've had people leave where like, it was pretty bad and pretty shady, right? Yeah. And that hurt. 
And I've had people leave where it was like graceful, man. It was like, hey, like, thank you for everything. Yeah. This is what I'm trying to do. This is why, like, you know, and, and I can respect that. You know what I mean? And so it's, it's really, I think, in, in the nature in which it happens. It's almost like if you're breaking up with someone, right? If you break up with someone via text, after you've yeah. had this long relationship with them where you've been there for them and, you know, that's not going to feel good, you know? Wow. And it's not going to feel good at any time somebody leaves, right? But you will get over it a lot quicker when it went down really cordially and smoothly. And then that door still stays open with that person, right? Because if everything was on good terms, it's like, hey, like it was just better for them to yeah. leave. That's so, respect right there, right? I'm still going to sure. want to like help you out and do deals with you down the line or whatever, wherever our paths may cross. Definitely. Right? So tell me though, from building a team and watching and certain times as you were growing into a team leader, mm -hmm. there were resources that you used. Do you utilize that same kind of hunger to make sure your current team has those resources in play, whether it's CRM, coaching, all of the information needed in yeah. terms of, you know, do you use some of the things you learned early on to help your team benefit and get further than you did? Yeah, absolutely, man. There's so many things, right? But I would say kind of the, the glue, like I would say there's one simple thing that has really led to my success and it's by having a consistent team meeting every week. Consistent. Right? We have a Tuesday meeting every single Tuesday at 12 o'clock. I've been doing that for like 10 years straight. Wow. And I probably missed less than a handful if I was like sick or traveling or yeah. whatever it might be. But it's literally every Tuesday, there's a team meeting where we come together, we review our numbers, we talk about the market, we talk about what's going on in everybody's life. And it's like the glue that keeps your, your team wow, together. It's awesome. a very simple concept, right? But think about it, like if you're, a, if you're a team and like you guys never come together, you're just a loose collection of agents, right? A team is gonna meet, they're gonna meet often, like they're that. gonna stay grounded, even though everyone's kind of doing their own thing. But th that's the glue that holds you together. I noticed, so one thing though, I wanna tell you is a lot of agents reach out to me mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, we wanna join your team. Yeah. And I ask them, what team are you currently on? What are you missing? A lot of people seem to find one or two things of a team. It's easy to talk yeah. about like what you're not getting on a team. Cause yeah. I think everyone has this expectation that you're just gonna give them 500 leads and then, you know, Tell me, in terms of the expectation, a lot of people always got something to say, but does oh, that come sure. down to their effort? Or what do you think that is, communication-wise, effort, why certain people leave a team early? Yeah. You know? I think you can tell a lot about a person when you ask them, like, well, hey, what role did you play in that? Or what were you not doing that didn't allow you to be successful? And really see if they give you an honest answer. Because I interview agents, I interview a handful of agents every single week. We have marketing, all kinds of ways that, you know, agents right. contact us to join our team. And the first question is like, hey, what are the pain points right now you're going through? And mm -hmm. I'll hear them out and then I'll start picking it apart. I'll say, okay, well, you weren't getting this from your team leader. Well, what were you doing to fix that, right? And then a lot of times they're like, uh, I wasn't doing anything, right? I was just expecting them to make my business boom, right? right. And so you're, you're trying to see, is this a resourceful person, right? Is this someone that is just here to complain? Or are they really like analyzing like, well, what role did they play? Right. Because someone that is analyzing what role they played, you can coach them and you can help them grow. If it's just pointing fingers, it's hard to coach someone that only points fingers at people. Yeah, that right? definitely is. And so I would say, and then you also got to get really clear of like, what are their financial goals and what are they willing to do to reach their financial goals? Right. And so on one of the things we ask in our interview is how much money do you want to make in the next year? I'll let them talk. Right. Now, what are you willing to do or what are you willing to sacrifice to make that happen? And they just stay quiet, bro, and see what they say. And it's, it's yeah, all over the board, right? That's but, interesting because everybody doesn't want to make the same amount of money. Exactly. And then once they discuss what they want to make in terms of transactions, I always ask people how many transactions you want to do. Yeah. Because you could easily reverse engineer. Yeah. Okay, you want to do 12 transactions for the year. Mm -hmm. Easy. Yeah. So one a month, you know. But a lot of people don't know how much transactions means to dollars, right? Depending if they're newer, if they're experienced, right? right? If they're a newer agent, they know a dollar amount. They don't know right. what five, five deals means 50,000 or 100,000 exactly. or whatever, right? So I would say, how much money do you wanna make? What are you willing to do? Now, what do you think it's gonna take for you to do that, right? Because I also wanna see if their expectations are in line with reality, right? right? Well, I just wanna come in part-time and I wanna work one yeah. day a week, but I want to make 200,000. I'm like, yeah, like <laughs> we're a little bit off, right? Let me, let, sure. let me like tell you really what it means to make 200,000 in real estate. And then if they pass that conversation, okay, let me invite you into our Tuesday meeting. Cause I want you to see what we're like and see if you even like us. 
and see if we like you basically. Yeah. And that's the next step of the process. That's right? where I'd start.